Hello, Ann Jesse here from the Illyria Arts Council. Today, I'm going to show you how to carve a block print and how to print with it when you're done with it. So, here's some supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need paper and a pencil to do your design. You're going to need some block printing rubber. Um, sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's white or off-white. Um, it's basically the same thing as a rubber eraser. Um, what you're going to need is some carving tools. Now, you can use just one handle and pull the tips out if you want. Right now I have a number two liner tip, makes a real nice fine line, and then I have a number four, which is kind of a U-shaped, which will take a lot of material out of my block. Um, you need some brayers, you need either black printing ink or you can use acrylic paint with a gel medium that will allow your acrylic paint to dry slowly because when you're printing you want your ink to dry a little bit more slowly you don't want it to dry on your brayer and your surface that you roll it on too fast because you want the print to happen also it's a really messy project when you get to the printing part. So you're gonna need a, a roll of paper towels, a decent sized bucket of water, and a sponge most likely. Let me show you how to do it. So here's what I did. I decided that I wanted to do a flower for my carving since I can use as many different colors as I want for a flower. Um, I drew it first on a piece of paper that was the exact same size as my printing rubber. Um, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna go over my lines very dark with my pencil. Cause what I'm gonna do is flip this over and transfer it onto the rubber. Now, if you decide to do words you have to do this. You cannot draw directly on your printing rubber because if you draw directly on your printing rubber a word and then you flip it over and print it, it will be backwards. So basically, it needs to be backwards on the rubber for it to print correctly, okay? So here's my flower and I sort of want my flower centered in the middle and I noticed I drew it kind of off uh, center so I'm just gonna I'm gonna trim my paper to make sure that this ends up in the center okay so what I need to do <coughs> is flip this over make sure it's centered and rub. Hold the paper with one hand and rub pretty firmly. I'm using my thumbnail. You could probably use the end of this tool too. And I'm mostly worried about the outline, not too much about the center, because I have a special technique that I'm gonna use for this center. So here we go, we've got it transferred. Now, when you're cut, what I usually do when I'm doing this is I use my number two fine liner blade and I do the outline. So what I'm gonna do is carve the outline and I want these petals to be flat. They're gonna be the surface that prints. And then I'm gonna remove some of the background, but I'm gonna leave some kind of decorative lines in the background so that it'll look artsy and fun. So here's what I'm gonna do. Notice where my fingers are. My fingers are closest to my body. The blade is in front. My fingers are not in front of the blade. And what you have to do is kind of a motion at a 45 degree angle, just 
to get this to carve. So you kind of angle it downwards at 45 degrees. And then raise it up just a little. And you can see I'm turning my block to help my blade work. Make sure you keep those fingers behind the blade. It's really easy to gouge your fingers when you're working on this. So try hard to keep them away from that blade. I think we have a smoke detector that the battery is dying in. I don't know if you can hear the chirping, but every now and then it chirps. Okay, so we've got our flower outlined. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to, it's got kind of a spiky little center and I really like that. So what I'm going to do is just shave out kind of in a sunburst circular motion. I'm going to shave out some little V-shaped notches, which is really easy to do with this number two liner blade. And I'm going to try not and over try not to overlap them so that they all have their own little space. But definitely in a circular motion radiating out from that center. Gives it a little texture and makes it a little more interesting. So I chose a flower because it's easy to do many different colors of flower and it's also a simple shape. Um, so that's pretty cool there. So if I want to, I could put some lines in the flowers um, to show that maybe they were a little ruffly or I could just leave them plain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to leave them plain for now. You can always print with it and wash it off and go back and carve. if there is something that doesn't print like you want it to. So what I'm going to do now, since I've outlined, is I'm going to carve the background out. And like I said before, I want some of the lines to show to make it look artsy. So what I'm doing is very carefully carving away from my flower petals. And I'm not carving too deep because I want some of that background to show. I want it to look like a block print. Now, if you don't want it to look like a block print, you can take an X-Acto knife and you can carve the whole background out if you want. But I like, I like the kind of textural feel when a block print prints that it has kind of a cool extra lines here and there in the background. So I'm going to print this out and then we'll show you, or I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to carve this out and then I'm going to show you how to print.
So I've pretty much gotten the entire background carved out. And what I'm doing with my liner tip is just adding a couple little skinny lines in there to add a little variety to it. You don't have to do that, but I thought it might make it more interesting. One thing that I wanna stress when you're carving is to carve away from your design so that you don't accidentally gouge into a place where you don't want it and make a little mistake before you even get to the printing part. So you notice I'm keeping my fingers in behind and carving away from my design. So I think that looks good. Let's give it a test print. So let's print here. So what I'm gonna print onto are some either small pieces of white paper or colored paper. You can also try um, different things like cardstock, tissue paper, wallpaper, whatever you've got on hand. Um, I have some bigger paper here so that you can roll your ink out. What I am using to extend the drying time of my acrylic is called Golden Retarder. And it says on here, additive for slowing the drying time of acrylic paints and mediums. So I couldn't find any block printing ink um, at Joanne Fabrics, but I did find this and I knew it would work. Um, I didn't feel like ordering block printing ink when I knew I could just do this. So what it says on the instructions, which I highly recommend reading the instructions, <clears throat> Mr. Jesse, uh, <laughs> it says for thicker applications, do not add more than one part retarder to eight parts of paint. And then it says for thin applications, do not add more than one part retarder to one part, part paint. Um, I, I of course had to test this so that I knew it would go okay for the video. So here's what I did the eight parts paint to one part um, retarder. And I'm gonna mix a color here. Um, I would like kind of a warm yellowy orange. So what I'm doing is mixing my color and then I'm gonna add the retarder. I'm just going to use a brush to mix it. And I wouldn't recommend using the, uh, the acrylic paints that are thinned in bottles because those are really, really liquidy and runny and watery. You do want something thicker. So now I have a really nice warm pumpkiny orange here. I'm going to get it thoroughly mixed. And it's about, I don't know, bigger than a silver dollar for sure. And I'm going to add maybe a nickel size amount of retarder. Hopefully that's not too much. I was able to tell when I rolled it out on the, with the brayer that if it was too thick or too thin. Okay, so I have a really nice thick amount of mixed paint with the retarder here. And what I do is put a generous line of it down on a piece of scrap paper. And I want to roll. I want that brayer to roll. And it's really kind of wrinkly. And you know that it's doing the right thing. I don't know if you can see it. So let me get rid of my extra paint here. You also notice that I have some paper down on my table. This is a very messy project. Now what I do is I normally roll 
the ink on a piece of paper first and roll it on the block at least a couple times. And here's how I print with a small block. I just gently rub, hold the paper with one hand and gently rub with another hand. The beauty of printing is if it doesn't turn out the first time, you can just keep going. Like you can see right there, I have like a little fleck of, I think it's printing rubber, um, was stuck on the printer, on the printing block. So I'm gonna try again. Roll a couple times in my ink. And I'm rolling in the opposite, another direction on my block. So let's try another one. Very gently hold it, very gently rub it. And lift. Nice. So I'm feeling like I need a little more ink on this. So I'm gonna put some more ink on that. You want your brayer to move. It shouldn't slide. If it slides, like a car sliding on ice in the middle of the winter, then your ink isn't thick enough. So let's try it. Let's try it on a different color. Let's try it on yellow. And I'm not worrying too much about where I place the flower on the paper because what I'm gonna do is trim around the paper and I'm gonna arrange these on another piece of paper. Oh, very nice on yellow. Nice. I'm gonna try it on some other colors. Let's try pink. And that drying extender, that retarder is working very well. My paint is not drying. So I'm not too worried about not having block printing inks. Haha, <laughs> looks really nice. One more, let's try it on gray. And what I'm really, really, really trying to do here is not get the ink on my fingers. And I do have a little sponge over here to the side if I do get it on my fingers, because what's gonna happen is it'll start getting on parts of the print that you don't want it on if you've got it all over your fingertips. Ah, love it on gray. Very nice. So I'm gonna try some different colors, but I also want to show you that you can streak another color through this while you are working and it will be kind of like a rainbow tie-dye effect. Um, so if you wanted to, you could mix a different color with retarder and then add that to ink that you already have going. And you'll have this really cool kind of tie dye -y effect. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dab down some yellow and some orange so that I end up with streaks. You could even add a dab of white to this if you want. Let's just try the orange and yellow for the moment. So it looks kind of streaked on your brayer. Roll it on your block. Try to keep the colors in the same place on the block. I think I slid that one. Yeah, look at that. 
That's the beauty of doing a print. If you do a really awful one, you can toss it right in the trash. And my recommendation is to have a trash basket right next to you while you're doing this so that when you're done with this ink um, rolling paper, you can throw it right in the trash. Um, let's see, let's try it on a red one. Oh, can't see it on red. Let's try it on white. Block printing is very good for experimenting, as you can tell. you've got kind of a stripped effect there striped a little more so what I'm gonna do is continue working along with this um, choose my best prints um, cut and arrange them and of course I am going to show you the finished results <laughs> 